Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECLAS, and in this lesson I'm going to be talking about geometric data, specifically junctions, the junction editor, as well as multiple bridge slash culvert openings and uh, the calculations there. So what I have on the screen here is HECRAS. It's a simple stream network that I've already sketched in here. I've got River A with a couple of tributaries, River B and River C, and then one cross section at the very downstream most uh, part of River A here. Okay, first we're gonna talk about junctions. Stream junctions are defined as locations where two or more streams come together or split apart. Down here, I have the geometric data editor open. Obviously, if you, you can click on that button to, to open it or edit geometric data. And then if I click on junction right here, that'll open up my junction data dialog box. I can then toggle between the different junctions. I have two junctions here, as you see, junction one and junction two. I can also open up this junction editor box by just clicking on the junction itself. Boom. And then edit junction. Okay. Go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and then pan over. Okay, so I can see my junctions a little better. So open that up, edit junction. Being a lesson, I've already made the edits that I want to make. Now I'm just going to talk about them. So what I'm seeing here is uh, a drop down to select which junction. I can also toggle using these arrows. I can also specify a description. And it also lists the different stream reaches, river A reach one, river B reach one. Junction data consists of the description the stream reaches, the reach length across the junction, which is right here, tributary angles, and modeling approach. So what we see here is a 50 feet is what I set for the junction length. The user's manual mentioned that once you're putting in cross sections, you should try to get cross sections as close as you can to the junction, just for better modeling accuracy and better model stability. This tributary angle right here I have set to 60 degrees, so I just assume that uh, River B was intersecting River A at 60 degrees here. And then I believe for the next junction, I said it was 30 degrees, but that's just an approximation. Over to the right, we have the steady flow computation mode and unsteady flow computation mode. For steady state, I can select energy or momentum. Energy is usually adequate, but doesn't take into account the angle of the tributary flow entering the river. Momentum option does take into account that tributary angle and also allows the user to include the friction and weight involved in the computations. For unsteady flow right down here, we have the option of force equal water surface elevation or energy balance method. If we're forcing the water surface elevation to be the same, then if the junction is a confluence, and usually it is, then the water surface is computed at the downstream end of the junction. But if it's a split in flow, type of junction, then the water surface is computed at the upstream end of the junction. If we select the energy balance method, then the water surfaces are computed rather than forcing them all to be the same. This is used for steeper streams and longer junction reach lengths. All right, well, that is it for the junction. You can um, add junctions, of course, just by clicking on a stream, adding a stream, and then connecting it to the end. So if I said this was a river, C and then reach two. Then I click OK. It asks me what do I want to name the junction that's right here. And I'll just call this junction three and then click OK. OK, so I got my junction three right there. We can also click on the junction and then delete the junction. If you want to remove the junction three, yes. And then that's gone. And it looks like my reach is now one total combined reach for a river C. And I may want to rename that or at least flip the label over. OK. You can also create a junction in the middle of an existing reach so you don't have to delete part of the reach and that's just by uh, clicking on the reach tool and then adding in a reach and it intersects right here an existing reach so i'll call this river c again i'll call this reach one that works and then um, do i want to make a split yes so it's asking for this section new name i'll call that reach three i don't think i have a reach three yet and now it's asking me for the name of the junction so i'll call this junction three so that's how that works. We have river C, reach three, two, and one, and then the uh, the junction three is right here. All right, let's transition the lesson over into multiple bridge culvert openings. So what I have sketched out at the bottom of this river system at the base of river A at station zero is a cross section. So I'll bring up the cross section editor. 
And what you're seeing here is, let me select river A and reach three. Okay, it's my only cross section defined. So I have the cross section station and elevation right here. And then I've got the other cross section data like Manning's N and the overbank station. And then on the right here, you see the map. It shows the diagram of that cross section with the main channel bank section, as well as ineffective flow areas. Now in this first section over to the far left is going to be my open channel flow. And then what you don't see here is a bridge deck, which will have a bridge section as well as a culvert section. To show all that, let me go ahead and uh, close this dialog box and click on the bridge culvert editor. Okay, perfect. This is what I was looking for. This is just the downstream end, but I could bring up and view both downstream and upstream. They look pretty much the same, so I'm going to just show one since it's a little bit easier to see. This is the downstream. This is how you define a number of different openings to be modeled at once. And this is a little bit more complex of a calculation for HackRAS when you've got multiple different openings at different elevations and uh, data involved. So for instance, in the river, if the water surface elevation begins to rise, we're first going to get flow only through the bridge section right here. And you notice there are a couple of piers as well. And then once the water surface gets high enough, we'll start getting some flow through the culverts. And then once the water surface gets even higher, we'll get some flow through the open uh, channel uh, flow area over here, which is what I'll call conveyance. Now, keep in mind, there are some ineffective flow areas at place. Here. So if I click on cross section, once again, we have this ineffective flow boundary set at an elevation of what looks like 530. So yeah, I can double check what that is. Ineffective flow area is indeed 530. Okay. All right. So let's uh, click on the multiple channel opening analysis button right here. What this does is it, it started fully blank, but I've already populated it. This is the from the user's manual. It gives us this particular example, but the numbers are probably a little bit different. What we have is three different opening types. There's conveyance, which you can add by clicking the conveyance button. Bridge, which you can add by clicking the bridge button. And then culvert group, because it's uh, it accounts for multiple culverts. And you can add that to your table by clicking on the culvert group button. All right, after that, we have station left, station right for both upstream and downstream. Now I kept the numbers the same for both upstream and downstream to keep things simple. But you notice what I'm defining here is conveyance ranges from 98 to 260. So that's these vertical lines here for this number one multiple opening analysis type. So from 98 to 260, that's open channel flow. From 260 up to 750, that's this section here, that's the bridge section. And then from 700 up to 940, that's section three here that refers to the culvert group. These left and right stations are used to establish limits for each of the opening, as well as stagnation points. Stagnation points are the locations at which the flow separates from one of the openings and the other. So in the case between one and two here, the station boundary is 260. So if the flow is less than 260, then it's going to go open channel flow. And if it's uh, above 260, it would go towards the bridge or the culvert group. Notice that the right station of the bridge opening overlaps with the left stationing of the culvert group by 50 feet. So here we have 7, 750, 750, and then here we have 700 and 700. So there's a 50 foot overlap right here between two and three, the bridge and the culvert group. By overlapping these stations, the user is allowing the program to calculate the location of the stagnation point between these two openings. Multiple opening calculations are computationally intensive, and that's why an iterative solution approach is used by HECRAS, by which the amount of flow through each of the three openings in this case is adjusted until computed upstream energies of each opening are balanced within the pre predefined tolerance. More information on this topic is available in Chapter 7 of the HECRAS Hydraulic Reference Manual. All right, well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about junctions and uh, how to edit junction data, as well as multiple opening analysis when you have a cross section that includes multiple types of openings like conveyance, bridge, and culvert groups in HECRAS.